Now this needs a load of um, dependencies too. Now Deja Vu fonts got that installed already. Um, we've just installed cups, got glib, ghost script. Now this is a big package. Uh, oh, looks like we might have most of it installed now, actually. Font config. All right, that's not too bad then. So I'll open open JPEG up because that needs to be installed. We've got all the dependencies here. So let's save the link as open JPEG. And install it. There's no options for the configure. So we'll just copy and paste the commands. Okay, that's built so there's no test suite so we just run these install commands and that's done so that's chapter 10 open JPEG Go back to Ghost Script. Um, we also need Lib Paper. There's no dependencies for this, so let's go straight away and save the tarball. Copy and paste these commands, there's no extra information about configuring. So that's done. Copies install commands, become root, paste them in, and that's complete. So lib papers under general utilities. And we can close that down and we can go straight for a ghost script installation. So what we've got here, got the actual tarball itself. patch, standard fonts, ok it's in SourceForge and so is the next one. So that's those two packages done. So let's get it extracting. Um, Ghost script build system is not user friendly. In order to use system copies of various graphics libraries, must do it using unconventional methods. And GhostScript uses old copies of several libraries. Some of these seem to have been patched to fix known vulnerabilities, but others of these copies are less well maintained. To ensure that any future fixes are applied throughout the whole system, it's recommended that you first install the release versions of these libraries and then reconfigure or sorry, configure GhostScript to link to them. 
If you install the recommended dependencies on your system, remove the copies of FreeType, LCMS, LibJPEG, LibPNG and OpenJPEG. So let's do that now. Apply a patch to prevent the seg fault. When processing some PDFs. And compile ghost scripts. So let's see if there's any options. There's a few here. And it doesn't look like there's anything extra on what's already put in the um, config line. So they also remove Zlib looks of it. Run configure. Let's run configure and see if it tells us anything after it's configured. So it hasn't, so let's build the package. Now it says here the shared library depends on GTK and it's only used by these programs here. So I'm going to be installing Image Magic, probably DVI, SVGM, um, and I think I might install TextLive, I'm not sure yet, and that's part of that is this asymptote. So, um, if I run this, it probably won't run because of the fact that GTK is not there, but I'll try it. Uh, but it does mean I'll have to come back and do ghost scripts again after these have been put in to get this extra library.
Okay, so that has finished compiling. Um, like I said, I'll try and build this shared library, but I don't expect that it'll work. Well, surprisingly, it seems to be at the moment. This is a runtime requirement. Okay, so that seems to have built, which kind of surprised me because it does say it relies on GTK plus 3. Um, not to worry, I think I would be inclined to rebuild this after GTK plus 3 has been installed anyway. So um, what I'll do is install the package now.
and the shared library. And there's some documentation. And the fonts as well. So now it says we can test the ghost script is actually running by loading a, an image. And you can see a window's been created here. If I just paste that, you can see there's a lovely picture of a tiger there. And if I move this over, you can see to quit this, it just says return to continue. And you've obviously got the page highlighted, so. Uh, sorry, that would be this screen here we launched the command from. So that's Ghost Script, which is uh, section or chapter 46. So I've got to put a R there to rebuild after GTK plus 3. And I'll close that down and tidy up. And that's done. So the next one we need is Poplar. So it looks like we've got all dependencies here. So that's handy. I'll just check these again. Come on. Yeah, I do recognise all of those as being complete. So I'm just going to go straight into downloading the packages. That's the main tarball and some data here as well. So you can see how building up these shared libraries is very onerous initially, but in time you come across packages such as this one where you've already done the work, you've built them once, maybe twice, um, and um, you know they're there, so it's all good. So I've got the 21. Let's see if we've got any extra commands here. Yeah, there's a few here. So let's create the build directory first. And then copy the CMake command. Now let's have a look at the options that are available. So release, got that. Test data dir. Enable and stable API ABI headers equals on. Enable GTK doc. That's for API documentation. Enable boost equals off. Use that if you haven't installed boost. So the commands as they are seem to be sufficient. Uh, right, what's happened there? Oh, yeah, it's because I've forgotten the two dots again. So you can see QT6, obviously something new. It hasn't found that, but it's found QT5. So it's like uncompressed, not sure why that's a no. Um, we have got Zlib installed. It's not a dependency, so maybe it's just some other feature. Or it's not needed because we've got compressed, maybe. So I'll just run make now.
Right, so that is built. Now to test it, we need to fetch some files using Git, which of course we've already built. So I'll copy this command here. So that's done. So I want you to do next is to copy this command to so run the tests. That's a complete pass. So we can now become root and install it. Completed. And some documentation. And additional popular data. And install it as well. And that's done. Oops. So Pop was in chapter 10. Not that it's complete. Remove that tab, back to cups filter. And the next one we've got to do is QPDF. So once again we've got the dependencies, I so will just save link as extract the package. And straightforward configure, make, check and install. In case that's built, I'll run the checks.
Right, so that has finished testing and there's no failures at all out of 5,251 tests. So all we need to do now is make install and that's done. So that's chapter 10 QPDF. It's installed. Shut that down. And recommended. Got all these. Mu PDF need to install. So we've got the requirements. We've got the recommended. Got the optional that's in the book at least. So let's download the tarball and the patch. the X window system for runtime let me go into that so that that's change color so fix the make file to link properly against the shared library install with the following commands there's no other options it's a little bit different to usual Okay, let's install the package now. It's complete. Let's tidy up. And it's done. So this is chapter 50 now, postscript. New PDF. And we'll close that tab down. Cups filters, so all that's left is a var here required to build a DNSSD backend of the Cups browse D daemon, which is needed for operating some network printers. And PHP use of this might be broken, so I might just leave that one. And then optional print, printer drivers, Guten Print, so I will be installing that, although it's quite a lengthy installation. Um, I'm going to leave Avahi and Guten Print at the moment. So for cups filters, I'll be doing a reinstall after the optional. So apart from that, we can build it. It's quite straightforward. Let's just check the options here. So disable the var here if it's not um, installed. That's okay. Without RC dir. So it's without boot script. Test from path equals value. 
If you wish to run a test but you do not have the default. Alright, oh, okay, so we don't need that because we have got it installed. So I think we can just grab this. So long as it takes not too long. Paste that in. Okay, that's done. So let's do make check for the tests. As it says there, Deja Vu fonts on either the test, but um, as you might remember, we've already installed them. So let's do make install, and that's done. So I'll shut that down now. Go back to QT. Oh, cups filters, I didn't. Uh, where was that? That would have been part of cups, wouldn't it? And right, so that's 46 cups filters. It's done. Oh, um, actually, that was going to be rebuilt after options so we've got three packages under printing to be rebuilt now um, I'll quickly put this good and print because that's the fourth of those packages okay so that needs GIMP and a few other packages or quite large packages as well that aren't installed yet so let's shut that down again back to QT Uh, I was just noticing earlier on there's a few two packages like um, well, let's get rid of these here um, pole kit I'm sure that was installed earlier on so that's chapter 4 security yep yeah, that's gone so I can come off of here um, e logging day really only needs ZSH to be reinstalled. Yep, I think we can install this and get that knocked off. So save link cares. If you're upgrading from a previous version, which we're not doing, so don't, don't worry about that. So we run this command. the root user run those commands configuring so it's a PAM configuration file and it says additionally you'll need to modify the ETC security capability comp file to grant necessary privileges to users and utilize the set cap to set capabilities on specific utilities as needed Okay, so we basically just reinstalled this to get PAM access, which is what, or PAM security, which is what ZSH needs. We haven't got Valgrind, so didn't see what section that was in. Section 4 security again. Libcap, yep, we haven't installed that, that's fine. So that's gone now. So 
So now we can do ZSH. Additional documentation. And I'd better tidy up first. And then extract SSH table. Now extract the documentation. Configure. We can add in enable cap to enable POSIX capabilities. Disable GDBM. I'm not sure why that would be necessary. And we can enable PCRE2. Okay, there's a little summary. So it all looks good. And let's build it. It's built, just got some info files to, info files to build. Okay, now I'll run some tests. Okay, so all the test passes, just one skipped. 
so we can install now install the documentation downloaded didn't install or generate the PDF documentation so we'll ignore that we can add ZSH to the list of the system shells so we should have bash and ZSH in there now And it's complete. So that's chapter seven shells. Shut that down and back to e login D. So it looks like that's ready to reinstall now. So I don't need to check the kernel configuration because we would have done that first time round. Um, let's just quickly check these. This is where users should be killed when the user logs out. Default is true. This defeats the traditional use of screen or Tmux. Right, but it says there's a config for that here. So it's probably best to use a config rather than building it in. So I'll just copy and paste this. And now run some tests. Right, so we had one skip there, there's one fail. I seem to have read that fail before. Um, there's another one there, not sure why that is. Explain that one, or oh, this one actually. It looks like it could be to do with the character sets again, possibly. Um, it does say a few are skipped, if not run with root privileges. Um, I'm not sure if it'd be worth running this as root. I've still got the two fails there, but the skips have gone. So I'm not sure why that, that is, um, especially as we've got all the 
Ah, oh, now I wonder if it's this Valgrind that's a possibility. Um, but I'm, I'm still happy with this. It's been running anyway with these failures. I seem to remember there's two failed before. So uh, we'll go with that. So let's have a look at, at this file here. Because there's a good chance we've already done these configuration files. So the kill user processes is actually set to Oh yes, this has probably been reinstalled, hasn't it? That's probably what's happened. So we'll have to run this. And if we look at it again, you can see it's now been changed to no, and the remark has been removed as well. The PAMD file should not need altering. We'll check them anyway. So eLog in D, you can see the settings are there, those two lines. And same with PAMD eLog in D user. Okay, this looks like it's actually been extended. Yes, they're writing a brand new one and overwriting the old one, so we need to copy this bit. And overwrite that. So you can see now it's been altered. Um, I'm just going to check the, uh, not that one, the previous one, just to be sure that hasn't been created by something else. So something there for system session. But the e login D is the important bit. Yep, that's that is the same. So that's okay. So that's e login D. says after recommended so that's now done. I just the recommended were oh yes there's quite a few there. So that can go. Um GJS I can't remember what that was for now. That's for a D bus I'm going to get rid of that because I don't know what it's for. It will come back up again if it's needed. And GJS needs... Yeah, again, I don't know what that's for. It might be QT5. It might be opening them up again in a minute. But if I carry on with QT5 now. So the next thing we need is GST plugins base. You'll see this has now got another new set of um, dependencies which are all to do with um, sound or, around, or based around sound. So I wonder if whether it's worth just going through this and installing them because um, we're going to have to do them at some point. So I may as well think about doing them sometime very soon. Um, looking through what's been done, we've probably got we've got nearly all the security chapter fulfilled. I can't think there's many more to do in there. There's probably one or two more. 
um, general libraries, probably about a half complete. And again, most of them will be done. Graphics and fonts, probably about half complete, and so on. General utilities, we've got a few there, but there will be some more. System utilities, maybe a few of them. Um, programming, many of them's probably over half of that's done. So we're definitely making good progress. It's just now the larger packages, the desktop environments, and so on where there's lots of work to be done and the multimedia stuff so it's the video type stuff and the sound stuff which is what we're looking at here so yeah I think it's probably worth um, cracking on with this um, after all QT is multimedia or needs multimedia stuff as you can see it's dependency Falcon's a browser that involves multimedia um, we're ultimately trying to rebuild Falcon so it would seem to make sense to crack on with these multimedia libraries, get some of them knocked up out of the way. So let's go to GStreamer, GLib we've got optional GTK for example. So yes, this GTK is looking like one that we might need to start thinking about building. So let's get that up next. So I think we've got all these installed. Um, I'm not sure if Pango was a reinstallation. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, there's a few there. Canter I know we might have actually done that because of the Cantorol fonts. Um, rather than me guessing, let's have a look. Channel 25. Pango, oh, oh right, okay, after sysprof, yeah, it says another one that's got the sysprof. So I'll leave that. Let's just have another look at that, remind us what that one's about. Okay, so that's GTK3, so that would help if we got on with GTK plus 3. Let's have a look at this. So it needs Git, we've got GTK2 or 3 if present. Well, we haven't got 3 because we need it. So let's take a look at GTK2 now. So it's got a few requirements, so we could get this one done. Let's open these up and just check these. I'm pretty sure we have done these. Pango, I've just checked. So 80k is under chapter 25. Yep, that one's done. GDK Pix buff is on chapter 25. Yep, we've done that as well. So we need a high colour icon theme next. So let's do this one. Save that. So simple configure. No tests or make, just to make install. And that's done. So that's chapter 28 icons. I can't icon seam. So now we move on to got cups, dot utils, gnome themes, extra, runtime for add waiter and high contrast themes. So let's have a quick nose at this because it might be if it's onerous we can install it another time because it's yeah required and we're trying to build GTK plus two so I'm going to leave that for the moment and put a note in to rebuild this 
Uh, no, sorry, this is runtime, right? So we don't need to have this installed. And as soon as it gets installed, it will obviously be used. Object introspection we've got, GTK dot we've got. We don't need to worry about this. So yeah, we can get on with GTK plus two. So we've got no options here, so we'll just copy these commands. Okay, so that has run. We'll run the test now. And as it says that um, some windows will pop up, so it probably means got to be ready with the mouse to um, move the wireframe. And uh, oh, it didn't. Okay, we've got errors. Uh, 
not sure what the arrow's... Oh, it says it passed. So, I don't know what that means. GDK picks buff, row stride, 1 is not equal to 3. Um, let me do an LD config. And rerun the tests. Oh, there's an error there. This alias files check. Okay, let's take a look at that. Something to do with a case test for the looks of it. Oh, right, okay, no, it does say that one test is known to fail. Okay, so it's not to worry, and they were quick as it says they're less than 1.1 SPU. So that's fine, make install. It's done uh, some configuration here. Um, it says the themes change the way an application looks. Uh, there are extra themes here. Um, I'm not sure if it's worth installing these now or whether they'll get picked up later actually. Uh, no, I'm not doing that because it needs GTK3. I don't think I'll bother with those for a moment. If they're needed, they'll come in. Um, it does actually configure a theme here. The high color one was just installed, so I'll copy that in. Um, and you can make them system wide as well. Here it says by copying them into GTK2 directory. Um, as the root, obviously. So I'll paste that in. And LX Appearance is an application that helps you choose themes, so we'll be installing that when we come to do LXDE. So apart from that, that's GTK2 done. GTK plus 2. Give it its correct name. GTK plus. And I think that was it. No things extra. Um, why didn't I install that? I can't remember now. Oh, it needed three, didn't it? Yeah. I think that'll be coming later anyway. So I'll, um, yeah, and that's a runtime, so that's unnecessary. So as far as I'm concerned, GTK Plus 2 is finished with. So that's chapter 25. GTK Plus 2. And close that tab down. We'll go to this add waiter icon theme. So it says it needs plus two or three. Well, we've got plus two, so that's okay. LibRSVG is also required. We've got that. And Inkscape. Well, Inkscape, I think, is quite a large package to build. 
Yeah, so I won't be doing that now. So I shall reinstall this package after Inkscape has been installed to gain whatever functionality Inkscape gives this package. But for now I'll download it and extract it. simple build as well without a test suite so that's done let's install it So that's done. So that's chapter 28 icons and I'm going to reinstall it after Inkscape. So we're back to GTK Plus. So we've got the high colour theme. Now I need ISO codes. So there's no dependencies on this. straightforward configure and make just run some tests now so note about reinstalling them or installing over a previous version, so I don't need to be concerned about that. Make install. And we'll just go to chapter 11 to sign that one off. ISO codes is complete. So that's finished. Now I'll link XKB common, I think we've installed this one. XKB common, uh, this is in chapter 9. Right, I've got a note here to re rebuild after Wayland. So let's have a look at the Wayland options, see if they can be done. Yeah, I think that one can be. And that one as well. So let's get these up. Yeah, you can see they're all highlighted there. So let's save link has. So, um, let's have a look at the rotation, the switch is used to disable, well, it's actually got a different switch there. Well, it's built fine with the default options, let's run Ninja Test. As usual, got a usual failure at the end, but as you can see, each test has run successfully. So, sudo ninja install, and that's complete. So, 
So it's chapter 9, Wayland. And now we'll go to Wayland Protocols. And that needs Wayland we've just installed. So let's quickly save this. Once again, it's just a case of copying and pasting the commands here. So, ninja test. Yep, that's all okay there. So, lastly, we'll just install it. It's done. Chapter 9, where the protocols mark that off. libxkb common. So we can reinstall this now. So we haven't got Doxygen, so I won't remove that. So it looks like we just copy and paste these commands. Ninja test. Yep, that's all good. Install. Done. So that's chapter nine. Libx KB common. That's been reinstalled. So that can be crossed right out. Now we're back to GTK plus three. Got this package here called Sask. So it's got no dependencies, but we've got two files to download. Uh, I think that's the right one. No options, we'll just run these commands. So that's done, we can install this now. And it says to build the command line wrapper, we run these commands. And then we 
install that and that is done. So that's under chapter 10, SASC or SASC, shut that down, and now we've got optional packages, so let's just check the rest of these, yep they're fine. JSON GLib Okay, that's just straightforward options again. and yep it's passed uh, install the package and it's done um, and I've got to see where that belonged the chaps are in general libraries. Jason Glib, it's done. Next package PY ATSPI two. Why have we already done this one? PY. No, we haven't done this one. So the dependencies are in place. Here we AT SPI. So Python module, no tests, configure it and install it. It's done. So it's PY eighty SPI two. And it looks like the last one we need is rest. Needs lib soup. Got that. I'll just check to see if it's been marked off. I, th I think this has been done. 17. Yep, it's marked off. So patches required to run a test suite. I didn't really want to install a patchy. Um, and it's got quite a few dependencies, although um, probably got most of them. If not all of them actually. Um, might just install it just purely for the test suite. Just lure Yep, that has got the dependencies. All right, okay, let's do this then. Got 
patch here for it. So, have we got any options here? No, so let's copy this. Install it with these commands. Run make the test. This will run the interpreter and print its version, so that obviously works. More comprehensive tests can be formed if you downloaded the test suite tarball. Alright, oh, okay. It's this here, so let's save that. I thought it was just another link to the patch. I didn't read it closely enough. Te test needs to be executed after the patch is installed. That's what we refer to the description below. So we install it. And then we describe only basic tests and tile table and change to the 5.4.3 test directory. So let's come out of this tar minus x vf lua tests cd lua tests and then issue lua minus e etc. Let's just see how long this will take. Oh, that was quick. Uh, okay, so it says final OK and it says that, so the tests were all good. So we can tidy that up. So this is chapter 13 programming. Um, this was Lua 5.4.3 because there's two versions in the book. So we'll make sure we cross off the right one. Back to Apache. And that's all the dependencies. So we'll get the package and a patch. So I will install the server, although it's overkill for a desktop. Um, it may be something that is of interest. So group add and user add. And extract the file now it's downloaded. So we've got a patch and a configure here. There's probably, yeah, there's quite a few commands here. I'm not sure how many of them are worth changing. LPFS, MPMS shared, it was all missing exec, shared. Yeah, I don't think it's worth changing anything there. So let's just copy that and build, configure and build it.
okay that's built so all we've got to do now is to install it if I type in the right window So if you want to start the server up, let's go to BLFS boot scripts and insert the boot scripts for that. We can start it up now. Uh, sorry, minute. So let's start the server. So in theory, if I open a tab and do http colon forward slash forward slash local host you can see that that is the apache test page it shows that it is serving that page so that's installed um, major servers chapter 20 cross that off as complete And go back to libsoup. Kerberos is required for it. I don't really want to install that if I can help it. Um, PHP is used for regression tests. Let's have a look. That, yeah, that's got way too many dependencies. So I'm not going to bother with that one. Um, so I'll just download this now. Tidy this up. So the tests are probably either going to be skipped or there'll be some failures. So let's look at this DVPI. No documentation, we haven't got that, and we don't need that. So, I'm going to create the build directory, copy the meson command, add in the doc enabled, get rid of that colon, and not forget the two dots this time. So it does look like it was looking for PHP, but it knows it's not there. So it does say some regression tests will not be compiled. So that's that's good in a way. At least um, it won't complain or produce errors when we're running the tests for those particular ones. It's built, so let's run the test now. There's only 37. Obviously, if you have PHP installed, there's going to be a few more, I guess. So, all of those passed. Let's now install it. That's done. Let's tidy up and mark that off in chapter 17. Lip soup. And we can go back to rest now. We've got all the dependencies installed.
So we'll just take the commands as they appear here. That's the test, but it says that a few may fail for various reasons. Uh, the OAuth 2, it said, oh, the async. Yeah, one's passed here, OAuth 2. But apart from that, that's okay. So let's now install the package. And that's done. So that's chapter 33, parts of the GNOME libraries. So this chapter is not in alphabetical order, so it's quite hard to find the packages. But I know what I've done there is so that you can um, just go down the list and install them in order to build GNOME. So it's near the top of that chapter list. Rest. So I'll get rid of that. And I think we're now ready to build GTK3 or GTK plus 3. So I'll download it. Okay, so let's have a look at the options. Looks like there's nothing extra to add. Let's just double check that. So Broadway backend, X11 backend, Wayland backend. GTK doc for the API, so no, there's nothing else to do. So we'll build this.
Right, that's built. Now to run the tests, we need to run this command as root. So let's do that to create some files by the looks of it. That's done, and now we can run make check. It does say we need a graphical session, and that some tests are known to fail. So let's see how we go time this. So those tests are finished and there are some errors but it looks of it, so I guess something failed. Accessibility dump, that's one that's supposed to fail. GTK ref test suite has two tests that are meant to fail. subtests that are known to fail as well so um, I'm going to be able to scroll back so far yeah that's as far as I can go now so it's hard to know if those tests have failed or not um, it looks like there's oh there it says there a11Y, so there's four of them. Accessibility dump. So it looks like it's just the accessibility dump ones that have failed. Um, because these are all in the same area under this A11Y and accessibility dump is immediately mentioned just after this oh, I guess what's, that's what A11Y is actually, accessibility um, must have not seen that term up until now so it looks like the GTK ref test suite either haven't run or they've not failed so good thing I suppose so I'm going to install this So there's an example of a setup here, configuration file, so we can copy that in, enable that, there's more settings there, um, there's part of GTK's three, GTK3's design, the scroll bar buttons are no longer visible in the scroll bar in many applications, if this functionality is desired, modify the GTK CSS file and restore them, so it might be nice to have so 
that is that. Um, let's just have a quick look at that. slash dot config gtk3 okay so that is gtk3 installed and it's under chapter 25 mark that one off and shut that down and I'll also tidy up GTK Plus version 3. Okay, so I'm now going to move on to GSL. Um, this is only used by one test, but um, I think this was going to be installed for something else. So there's no dependencies for it. Oh, maybe I think of something. Is it GCR? I'm thinking of maybe. Uh, but there's no dependencies apart from a couple that are outside of the book. So get on with installing this. Okay, so. There's no configure options given, so it's just a case of copying and pasting the commands in. So that's built successfully and time to run some tests. I'm not going to build the documentation because I've installed Sphinx.
So those tests appear to have passed successfully. Uh, now it's time to install. And that's the package complete. So that's chapter 9, general libraries, and it's GSL. So I'll shut that tab down now. Back to GStreamer. So we've got all the dependencies available for GStreamer. Let's download it. And extract it. Um, if you do not have an Objective C compiler installed, the build system for this package will emit a warning about failed sanity check. This is harmless and safe to continue. Um, I believe we will have at least one because remember we built uh, or re yeah rebuilt GCC with extra languages, and I seem to remember that was one of the languages that was rebuilt. So um, we've got no extra options and you can see there's some freeform fields here that are set one's the URL showing where it came from um, in fact it's incorrect because it actually says SVN now, arguably so that should be stable because that's the um, version that we're actually building from this will simply reflect the latest development version which is obviously going to be wrong so I'm going to correct that by as you can see up here the correct URL URL should be all of this and in fact I could run that out and put that in so that that to me would be the correct URL because this is the version of LFS that is being built not not the development one so, oops, that's the keyboard again catching me out. Uh, so now I can put in the last line, which has got another uh, freeform field in there. So it's a BLFS, and I could put some like kernel text in there as well, for example. And now Ninja to build it. Okay, it's completed building, so now let's run Ninja Test. Oops, wrong window again. So, Okay, so I've got a usual fader at the end there. Let's just review. So there's one skip, but the rest passed, so that's okay. 
install it and that's done. So J Streamer is chapter 42. I imagine we'll be spending some time around this chapter now. Chapter 42, G Streamer. Yep. So we can shut that tab down. Now we've got G Streamer plugins we're back to. Base. We've got G Streamer. We've built Alsa. Lib, yep. City Paranoia. Let's load that one up next. No dependencies, so let's download the packages, or package rather, and a patch. Okay, it looks like it can only be built on a single thread. So it may take a little bit longer than usual. Okay, well it didn't take long anyway. So let's install package and that's done. So that's chapter 43, Audio Utilities, CD Paranoia 3. Shut that tab down, back to plugins base, and now we've got libog. So again, no dependencies, just one package. So look at this, just straightforward copy and paste again. That's built, that's from the tests. All done. So let's install it and let's complete. So Libog, back to chapter 42. That's complete. Uh, Lipsiora. So it needs Libog. We've got that. Libforbis recommended. So that's actually one of the packages here that we had to build. You can see it's already gone yellow, uh, purple because I've just opened the tab. So we're completing. The requirements of two packages here with one go. So lib for this. Um, so it's just to build PDF documentation that. So we've got all the links for it. Let's download the package. And install it. So enable docs option we've got here. This switch enables documentation formats other than the supplied HTML. So I presume that's what would require these two packages to be able to do that. So I won't add that in. Just configure it and build it. Run some tests. And now install the pack. Oh, hang on, we had a failure there. No such files or directory. That was interesting. And the build was successful. Um, Oh, 
what I was looking for. Util.po. Can't see anything like that being built. Alright, built it there in the test, something called util. Um, I'm going to rerun the test with minus k in case there's anything further to test. Yeah, there is. So that seems to be a problem with the package, then I'd say. Apart from that, um, these will come back okay. There's quite a few of them. Yeah, with that minus K, it hasn't failed. That's interesting. Oh, I wonder if it was um, a threading thing. It could be a threading thing. Maybe the checks need to be run on one thread. And that's what happened. Because I don't think that error's come back there again. And that's just running check. Obviously it's been built whatever it needed or it skipped it. Um, I might actually just rebuild this again. Just to check that. So I'll get back the configure and build. So, oops. So configure and build obviously runs okay. And I'll run make check minus J1, see if it fails this time. No, it hasn't, so that's obviously a threading issue. Yep, that's fine. And I'll paste in the installation commands, and that's complete. Shut that tab down, go back to Liberty Aura. There's nothing else I want to install here, so we can build this. Uh, so there's no extra commands. Configure and make. Make a check on some tests. All tests passed. And now let's install the package. And it says if you want to install some samples, so you can hack on Theora. Install as a root user, so let's stick them in. Things are there, and that's complete. So, Libsyora chapter 42. I didn't do Libforbis, did I? Libforbis. Right, Lib Forbis, Lib Theora together, so I'll mark them both off and shut the tab down. And back to GST plugins. So I've got maybe a couple more here that I want to install. Um, so graphene. Got the options for that. Let's save link as and install it. We've got any options. 
just for building API documentation. Not worried about that. So let's configure and build it. And ninja test. Okay, it looks like that's all passed. Ninja install. And it's done. So that's chapter 25. Graphene. Shut that down. And the next one we've got is Opus. So there's no dependencies to speak of for this one. Oops. Uh, save. Don't know why I opened that in another tab. Obviously missed the correct option. Okay, so once again, it's just a simple case of copying and pasting. Make check. So that's built um, and tested, will pass, so sudo make install, and that's complete. So Opus chapter 42 is complete. Close that down, and the next one I want to do again, have a go at, is SDL. Now I've already built this. Um, but it needs to be rebuilt with options. So let's see what extra work needs to be done here. So yeah, there's a few things. Pulse Audio I've actually already built as well. Um, but again, that needs to be rebuilt with options. So I can take advantage of doing this now, being we're in the area, particularly with sound drivers at the moment. So AA Lib. Needs Slang. We've got LibBNG and PCRE. Let me just check those. Um, PCRE, I know for a fact we have got a PNG. I've just got to check. Lib PNG, is it? Yep. That's all done. So we can go with Slang. Right, it says doesn't support parallel build. So I have to just copy and paste this.
Okay, it's built, let's run the tests. All done, so now we can install the package. And we've got a failure there. Error two. Cannot stat sources this land elf obs. Okay, we'll try this separately. Well, it says make check or to create a static version, but it doesn't seem to. We've done that. Sources. Rerf. Yes. Slang source elf objects lib slang dot so yes it's there. Well that's strange. Um Try doing sudo. Yeah, so that's a path issue then. And it does say you may have to run ld config there just before I enter that command, just there at the bottom of the screen. So I shall do that as well now. And that's a slang finished. So it's chapter 13 programming. Here it is. Shut that tab down, back to AALib. Right now it's got GPM here, GPM we've already installed. So I'll just open the tab up anyway and I'll just check that it is completely installed. It should be, it's one of the first packages that was installed and I don't think it has many dependencies. Uh, so that's chapter 12 it's in. Yep, it's it is installed completely, so that's good. So we can install the AA lib now. So I might have a slow mirror here. Yeah, it's not actually uh, downloaded correctly. So let's try clicking there. Try a different. Uh, let's try one closer to home. Oh, right now it's working. Okay. It took its time. Oh, 
Right, I need to wait for it to <laughs> finish downloading. Okay, so as you notice there, the, app, the directory it's created is different from the name of the tarball. So fix a minor problem with the included M4 file. And configure and make. And sudo make install. That's done. So that's chapter 10. AA lib. And then back to SDL. This needs ALSA. So it looks like else is a suite of programs, which I think there's about four or five different packages. Yeah, there's also plugins, utils, tools, firmware, and OSS. So that's yeah, five or so. So this is going to be quite involved. I seem to remember doing this in the past. So also lib, we've already installed. So we don't need to do that again. Alsa plugins requires Alsa lib and optional FFmpeg and so on. Now, um, a lot of these are quite involved, but again, we may as well get stuck into these. Uh, we've got to be done sometime. We are dealing with mainly audio based software, so let's crack on with this. FFmpeg. So recommended Libas, let's get this one. So these should all be installed, I think. Um, let's check them all. I think half buzz might need to be reinstalled. So let's check where these are. Free type is Chapter 10. Yep, that's been reinstalled and so is font config, so I'll get rid of the both of them. Um, Fribidi, that's been installed. And Nazem, which is chapter 13. Yep, that's been installed too. So just got half buzz. Yeah, that needs to be reinstalled after some of the options. Um, looks like all oh, right. Okay, so it's just graphite is needed because we'll be building LibreOffice at a later point. So I think that's all I need to build for this one, that's the only remaining dependency. Graphite, CMake we've got, free type we've got. Okay, Graphite 2, so it should build, because we've got half buzz mostly installed, we're only building it for Graphite. Um, yeah, we've got the other Graphite font for a package to be useful, so we need to download a font as well by the looks of it. And there's some notes about it as well. Right, there's no notes there at all. So let's load up the Roman ones. OK, 
Okay, looks like Genesis Plus might be good because it has complete Greek coverage. So let's click on that. Downloads. Save the file. Okay, so now I need to go to a font config really, I think it is it font config to find out how to install the fonts correctly into the system. So I'll go back here, fonts config, pull this one up. Um, somewhere here uh, perhaps it wasn't fun config was it free type um, somewhere here was a oh I know it was at the beginning wasn't it I think Oops. maybe not yeah, I'm sure it was near the beginning. What's this other one here? Oh, gee, oh yes, that's right. It's this one here, TTF and ATF font. So it's under the um, X window system. So if you remember this, these instructions here give us an idea of how to. Um, install the fonts in, correctly into the system. So I'm going to copy this, install command, add in the word Gentium, as that's the name of the fonts. Uh, of course, do it as root. Um, I'm going to create a directory called Gentium here, change into it in case that zip file that just downloaded hasn't got a base directory. Gentium.zip. Uh, what was it called? Let's see what that was called. All right, capital G it was. So it has actually created a separate directory. So you can see there is um, a load of TTFs. There's some documentation not sure what's on the web directory. Uh, I don't know what those WAF files are. I think there is a package for that. Um, so it might be worth copying those as well. So yeah, I'll copy star dot TTF. Or should we use an install command actually? Where's that page gone that I had? Graphite. Oh, that's strange. Alright, oh, I've used the index to go into it. Um, okay, so install. Basically, this one is a copy of modifier, so it's going to be star.ttf into Gentium and again that's the root user and I'll copy the web directory there as well uh, so that would be web 
forward slash star dot waff. There's waff two there as well. Okay. Um, I'm doing this thinking that I might need these for the WAF package. I have seen it, but I don't know what it is about. So <coughs> when we get to that point, we'll find out if um, this has actually been necessary or not. So those are copied. Now I need to run this FC cache command to update the font config cache with the word Gentium. And I need to do it as the root. That's better. So that's been done. So I'll go back to the index there. Back to these. I'll close down these tabs. Don't think I need them anymore. So I've got a suitable graphite font. Um, Half buzz will be reinstalled after graphite has been installed, so I think we're okay to start on this now. Close that down. Um, I don't think I saved this, did I? Okay, let's start building. So, um, looks like the only thing we've got to turn on is to turn on a verbose mode for the compile, which might be useful to see what's going on. So I'm going to copy that in, append the two dots, and start the build. Okay, so it just shows us the actual compiling line rather than just the green line telling us what, what file it's actually compiling. So it's done. Make test. So we've got some failures there. Failed. So I don't know what these are, whether they're fonts or something that required. It doesn't mention anything there. Um, oh, to execute, execute the test suite, you need font tools, which is Python 3 modules. Otherwise, the CMP test fail, which is what's happened. So um, I'll ignore the fact that they've failed them because we haven't got the full test feature set and just go for an install oh we can make some documentation let's do it first make docs okay Looks like we've generated some HTML files there. So now I can install and install the documentation. Okay, the PDF stuff's not there, probably because, um, yeah, Doxygen's not there. But the uh, HTML files have been copied. So that's okay, that would have failed on that last command. So let's tidy this up now. Graphite's in chapter 10. Graphite 2. Now I'm going to move back to half buzz and reinstall that. Now we've got graphite installed. So let's have a look. 
we'll make the build directory. Copy the meson command and then we'll have a look at this. So I can see straight away it's got graphite enabled there, so we have got that installed now. Benchmark disabled. No use for none developers. And docs equals false. If GTK doc is installed, which I think it is, the documentation is built and installed, this which prevents that. So they haven't got that there anyway. We'll have the documentation. So we'll just check this now. You can see we've got we haven't got something called Chaffer, I don't know what that is. No experimental APIs. No platform shaders, it says not normally needed, and the benchmark is no, so everything else is switched on, so that's good. So let's build the package. So that has built, run the test now. Okay, and what we'll see from that, there weren't any failures. Oh, there was one there. Oh, MacOS, that one. So, I guess that's probably why that hasn't run. Again, it's to do the Latin one codec. Um, that's quite a strange thing that's happened there. So, there's obviously a common problem with, with Ninja. And this Latin one codec, whatever it is. So I'll just carry on because that's obviously something that's localized to Ninja. Um, I am mean, starting to wonder if I should reinstall Ninja, if, if that might help. Um, but I'll do that at a convenient point. So now Ninja install to reinstall the package. And that's complete, so I'll mark that off now as rebuilt. And shut down that tab and tidy up. Okay, so now we can build Libas. Got all the dependencies installed.
Okay, we've got font config, so we don't need to disable it as there's an option down there. Just um, build the package and install it. So nice and easy. So that's complete, that's chapter 42. <clears throat> and that's complete. So shut that one down and we're back to FFmpeg. So we'll just move on to the next dependency, which is FDK AAC. I might load all of these up while I'm here. Opus, we've just done. Next 264, 265. VA, Media Power, STL2, then optional. Frail. Plugins, libcdio, libdrm, libwebp, I think we've done that one. Pretty sure that's completely installed. Let's see if we can find that one. Yeah, that's installed. Okay. Open CV. Pulse Audio, that's got to be reinstalled. Seem to remember. Yep, that needs to be reinstalled. Speaks. Video for Linux Utils, Xvid, and there's a load of others there which are not part of Linux from Scratch or beyond Linux from Scratch. So there's loads to get through there. Um, what I think I'm going to do is go through these backwards. So I'll start with Xvid, and that needs Yasm or Nasm. We've got NASM, XFID Core, so uh, again it's just a case of copying and pasting the commands to build this. Okay, successfully built, there's no tests. So we've built the package and it's done. Oh, and down one more, so it's three levels we we're up or down. Okay, so that's chapter 42. Next vid. V4 utils. So we've got all these. SDL2 is one we're going to build. So let me bring this forwards and build this one first. So this has got dependencies here we've already built. So iBus is one we need to build and lib sample rate. 
that needs lib sound file and fftw so fftw is one we can build immediately right uh, let's go back here Check for any directories I've left lying around. ISO codes needs to be done. And blues and AA lib. So there's a few options here. Let's have a look. First build is for double precision arithmetic. Install FFTW by running the following commands. So if we look at these here, it's got enabled shared, which is in each configure. Then it's got enable threads, which is in each configure. And then enable float, which is in the second build only. And then enable long double, which is in the last build. So we d these aren't options we can, we need to change. We just need to copy what's here to um, get the package built in various ways. Right, I was hoping it would put out some information because of the different parameters, but it hasn't unfortunately, so I'll just build it. So this is double precision arithmetic we're building FFTW4. Okay, let's run the tests.
Okay, well, that's soon to pass. It says at the top there, FFW threaded transforms past basic tests. So, I'm going to install that now. That's done. So, the next bit I've got to do is to build single precision. So, I'll just copy all this in. Now, strangely enough, I can't see that they test this again. Uh, but being being um, the package is being rebuilt with different parameters, I'm going to run make check again to check that obviously the single precision is built well. I mean, it should be okay, but um, it's not quite a good idea making assumptions about things sometimes. Right, so that's built. So I am going to run make check. I wish I'd done time on some of these now to see if the uh, builds and tests would uh, vary very much between the different configurations that we're building. But I'll time this one and then can time the uh, long double precision one that we're going to do last of all. Okay, that seems to be a lot quicker than the double precision, so I guess that's that makes sense being it's only single. So let's make install and now we'll go on to build the long double precision. So I am gonna time this one being built.
Okay, so that's built, and as I said before, I'm going to time the tests. So, was it check, was it? Yep. Right, so that took a little bit longer, but not significantly. Um, again, it's all passed, so it just leaves me to make install. And that's done. So, yep, that's the whole package complete. Tidy that up and mark it off chapter 9 General Libraries FFTW OK, so I'll shut that one down and go to the LibSound file. Now, I have a feeling this was a rebuild Yes, I've uh, got to rebuild this one with options. So FLAC is something that's recommended. We've got the other dependencies built, so it is only FLAC that needs to be installed. And this has got no further dependencies that we are interested in, so save the tarball and a patch. So there's disabled thorough tests. Maybe if you design more extensive tests, I suppose that would be a good idea. Um, don't think I'll do the exhaustive test. That looks like that's going to take too long. 
So I'll run this in disabling the uh, removing the disabled thorough test. So the thorough test run but not enabling the exhaustive tests. Well that didn't say how long the um, thorough test run. Okay, let's see how long it takes.
So close that down and move on to libsound file. We've already done this one, so I don't need to download it. So straightforward build. And run the tests. Right, I've just noticed maybe this was a mistake. Let me abort this and delete this. Um, that there's one package that I haven't actually installed yet, and it looks like it's been installed because I've opened the <coughs> the tab up, and it's this speaks one. So maybe that was a bit of a mistake opening up so many at once. It's something I used to do. I've been trying to avoid doing it and um, <clears throat> I've obviously uh, missed out on that because of it or nearly missed out. So I'll look for speaks is here. I'll bring this forward in front of lib sound file. So it requires libog which we've installed. I'll just check the other dependencies. Opus we've done. Lib Orbis, Alsa Lib's done. So, yeah, it's just this one that's a bit off center. So, save this link. There's an additional download here. Right, so the two separate tables need to be extracted and build, built independently. So the first one is the speaks one. So enable binaries. Builds two binaries to encode and decode to and from the speaks format. I can't see that in either configure command, so I'm going to add it to both of them. It sounds like that could be quite useful. So, make. Make install. Now extract and install the speed XDP or speaks DSP package. So I might as well just extract it here. Speaks DSP. Okay there. They've got the tar commands here for that, so I'll just copy this. And once again, I'll add in this enables binaries. Uh, this will be a full stop I've missed. So make. Right, this one didn't recognize the enable binary, so it's the first package that accepts enable binaries. Make install. And that's that package done. So that's chapter 42 again. Speaks. Right, so now this time we'll be able to install libsound file. Uh, libsound file.
so I'll configure a mic. It's done, run the tests. Okay, looks like that's all successful. Install the package again, and that's done. So, I'll cross that off, and it's fully complete now. Close it down, and we've got lib sample now. So, we've got our lib, got sound for uh, lib sound file just installed, FFTW. Only for the test, but that's now installed. So let's have we got this one already? Lips sample. No. So lip sample rate. Again, just a matter of copying and pasting the commands to build this. Make check to test it. Okay, that's done, so I'm going to install it now. And that's installed. Cross that off, and that's complete. Close that tab down. And we move on to iBus. So this requires deconf. Right, let me do these one at a time. This is dbus. We've got glib. We've got gtk3. We've got xml. We've got. Yeah, we've got all these. Oh, that two. Downloads there, yeah. Let's do this one first. Deconf editor. So extract the first package, deconf. Run a set command. Any other options? So I can only build the API documentation, so I'll leave that off. So let's build it. Test it.
So all the tests have passed, we've got our usual error message. Let's install this. Now optionally install the editor. So let's copy all these commands. Doesn't look like there's any tests. Let's try it. Okay, there's one test and it passed, so that's okay. So, install the editor. And that's done. Backup 3. And remove the deconf source directory. So that's in chapter 33, GNOME. Decomp, right, this is the chapter that's not particularly in alphabetical order, so I'll just have to scan down. There it is, about halfway down. So shut that tab down. And we've got iBus again, so I need to check ISO codes. At don't remember that one. I remember doing it, but I don't remember if that was one with a rebuild or not. So that's in chapter 11. I so know that's installed all, all okay. Um, so the next one we've got is libnotify. So I think we've got, oh, there's two more here that are required at runtime. Let's have a quick look at these. Okay, so it looks like we need to grab these. So I'll open this in a new tab. Now we need Lib Canberra. Required lib Vorbis, Alsa lib, we've got, just need to check it's none of these libraries have got waiting to be built. GStreamer, I think we built earlier on, GTK3, GTK2, Pulse Audio, now that needs to be rebuilt. So I'm going to pull that one forward. And rebuild that now. Let's see what it needs. So it requires lib sound file, which we've done. Also lib we've done. Dbus we've done. E login D I think we did as well. Yep, I'm going to check that one though to be sure. So that's chapter 12. Yep, that's been finished. Glib, I'm pretty sure we've completed this one, but let me check chapter 9. Glib, oh yes, that was waiting for sysprof, okay, that was just one dependency there. Um, Let's see what this sysprof needed. Okay, I think we might be able to do that and finish that off. Because um, some of these we're... Well, we've already done GTK, poll kit's been done, e-log D's done, so I think we can probably look at that now. So we're getting a little bit diverted, but it's probably going to be worth it in the long run. So GTK Plus is in JSON GLib Chapter 9. Yep, that's installed. So LibDazzle we haven't done before. 
Use Duty Cursory and Valor, so we can do this one. Let's deal with that now, save link has. So again, it's just a straightforward copy and paste to build this. That's done, let's test it. So all tests have failed, uh, passed, sorry, just our normal failure. So let's do a ninja install. And that's complete. So that's chapter five, X libraries. Uh, 25, sorry, did I say 5? Lip Dazzle. So I'll shut that one down. Sysprof. Right, we've done poll kit. I'll double check this. I think that's in the uh, security actually. Yeah, poll kit's done and E login D has been rebuilt as well, so those are done. Lib unwind, that's off the book. So I'll save this link. And start building. So there's no options we need to take notice of. Okay, that's built. Let's run some tests. And they've all passed, so let's install this. And that's complete. So that's under chapter 13 programming. This prof is complete. Now, um, just looking through, there was another package that needed sysprof apart from glib, so I thought I might as well install that now. Um, if I can find it, I'm pretty sure it was a small one. Yeah, we've got quite a bit of, uh, got quite rid of, rid of, uh, start again, we've got rid of quite a few packages that needed to be reinstalled, there's only um, probably less than half that need to be reinstalled now, so at some point I'm going to go back and revisit these. Um,
Oh, I can't. oh there it is there. It's Pango. I think that was the only one that relied on sysprof. So Pango is a relatively small package. So I'm going to reinstall that one now before I do glib. Um, so I'll let me have a look. Sysprof we've done. Let's find Pango. There it is. Load that up. So you can see um, there's Sysprof, the last one. So let's extract it. introspection so it looks like we just copy and paste the commands as they are It's done. Test it. It says one's known to fail, but we've got two skips. Uh, it's test font, but it's actually passed, so that's good for us. Uh, Ninja install. And that's built. Or rather rebuilt, so I can cross that one off completely now. <coughs> and close that tab down and now can reinstall glib so I'll just quickly look again at the packages here, see if there's anything obvious that we haven't done. So once again I think this is the third time I've done this, patch it for the warnings etc. Um, if a previous version of Julie was installed, move the headers out of the way so that later packages do not encounter conflict. So I found out that this directory did exist, so I'm going to remove that as the root user. Um, just in case, I don't think it would do any harm if it wasn't necessary. And. Man equals true to build the main pages. Yeah, I think we can just copy and paste this to rebuild it. Uh, oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, this I'm just looking at this note here, it does mentioned we do, we do get some errors at the end that they're harmless
Okay, so that has built and there's those errors. Um, okay, so we've got the install GDIB first. Um, I'm not sure if the test would work. I imagine it'll be testing the installed version, so um, yeah. it's best to install it now. Install the documentation again. Alright, so we've got these two packages installed obviously because we've been here before. So let's run Ninja Test. One file is known to fail if the test is run as or run as the root user, so we're unprivileged. Uh, it should work okay. Right, so I think that was uh, a good run. I don't see any fails going past, so I'm just going to check anyway. No, that looks okay. So the last thing I've got to do is to remove this file here. <coughs> and that's the end of GDIB. So I mark that off in chapter 9. GDIB. It's been reinstalled. And I'll close the tab. I'll get rid of Pangar did. So Pulse Audio. So this is another one that needed to be rebuilt. Um, what chapter is it? 42. Yeah, this is uh, another rebuild after the options, so I'm going to go through these. Oh, yeah, I'm already going through the options with the looks of it. So, Libcap with Pam, we've done Speaks, Xorg, Avahi. Now, I haven't installed that, I don't think. I think this had a few, yeah, dependencies, so. I'll go through these dependencies now. So we've obviously got GD, we've just done it. Object introspection. GCK 2 and 3, we've got libdaemon. So let's download this now. So 
So it looks like we just copy these commands. And install. And that's lib doom and done. window okay so that's chapter 9 general libraries lib daemon completed so back to Avahi Libglade is the next one. So we've got all these dependencies. Let's save the package. Extract it. And install it. So it looks like, it. again, it's just a copy and paste. Test it. It says one test is known to fail. Uh, can we see it? Test convert. Can't see that written anywhere there. Oh yes, there it is there, fail test convert. So that's okay. Make install and that's the upgrade done. So chapter 25. is done. So I'll shut that one down. Back to Vahi. Got these installed. Uh, PYGTK. Let's take a look at that one. So it's a Python module. Needs PYG object. Python got eighty K we've done, Pango we've done. Right, I need to check these other Python modules. So let's do this PY object first. That requires glib, which we've done, PY Cairo. PY Cairo we've got. Python we've got, object introspection, yep, we can do this one. And I've just checked, oh no, I've already installed this one. So, don't need to look at that one at all. Python ATK Pango. So, PY Cairo, I've seen, I've done. Pango's done. And one again. GTK Plus done. Libglade has just been done. Numpy's outside the build. So, it looks like I just need to install PY GTK. I'm just checking. No, that's not been done. So save link as so let's go down to the instructions. We've got a set first of all, and then we can build it. Oh, right, it says PYG object 2 not found. Uh, 
definitely got it on my list. Um, I guess we can reinstall it. Two dot two eight seven. This is two different versions. No. Maybe it's because I've reinstalled G there, but that's a possibility. Um, may have broken a link or something. So let me clear this up. Extract PY object. And have another go at installing this then. And what's going on here? Ah, right, yes, there is two versions then. I've installed version 3.4, this needs version 2. Right, now everything makes sense. Okay, so I didn't realise that, so if I put 3.40.1 has been installed. Okay, so that explains it all. Save link as. So now we've got the version 2 version. Now let's rerun this command. All these two commands, this should work now. It's better. Installed. So that's complete. So I'm making note that I've also done 2.8, uh, 2.28.7. And I'll close that tab down, tidy up. Uh, Python. And now I can extract um, PYGDK. Okay, and now rerun the said, and this time the configure should work. Just noticed we can build the documentation, so I'm going to stop this, start again. So run this said, run this configure, and add in this enable docs because we've got the lib. XSLT library. We build some HTML documentation. Okay, now I'll build the package again with that option.
Parts has built. Let's run the tests. Okay, it's waiting for me to paste some stuff here. Two things. There's one failure there. GTK message dialogue. Let me write that again in case it timed out. No, it seems to have failed again. Uh, not quite sure why that would be. <laughs> message dialogue. Uh, it could be the environment we're in, possibly. But I think I'll uh, accept that as it is. That is PY, oh right, yeah, PYGTK module. So that's marked off, back to Avahi. Um, tidy this up. Okay, so it looks like we've got all the dependencies in, so we can do save link as, oops. Save link as Avahi, and there's a patch. So we've got some groups and users to add here, which do as root. And now we can patch the source. Fix the vulnerability in Avahi Daemon. And then we've got a huge configure command here. Let's see if there's anything else that may be of relevance. So enable test allows the building of tests and examples, but there's no test suite. Not sure what that is. The DNS SD. I suppose we could add those two in as well. See if that configure works. Okay, it's not building Python. It says you need Python py py objects and Python dbus. Now, is there a chance that Python dbus is an earlier version? Let's take a look. Same as PYGTK, uh, PYG object was. So this is 1.2.18. Oh, here we go as an index. D 
device. No, there is only one version. We have installed this. So I don't know why that hasn't been found. Let's try an LD config. Rerun that config command. Strange. Short tests. And it hasn't found a lib event either. Um, and yet that's installed. So that's rather strange. Chatlib event then. Pretty sure we've done this one. Network utilities seventeen. Yep, that's definitely installed. Let's do a config help. Let's try that with a grep. Uh, event. Okay, so has lip event been disabled in the config? I don't think it has. Oh, so it has. So why was that? I'll oh, remove if you have it installed, okay. And disable, oh right, okay, they've got disable Python. Oh, I see, and it allows a regular install to complete successfully. Okay, so that all makes sense now. So let's rerun the config. So that's it, we've got lib event now. So we can now build it. That's all done. Make install. And then we just got to build the uh, boot script for the daemon. And we should be able to start that too. Yep, that seems to be working. So that's Avahi, chapter 16. Knock that off. Close the tab down. So back with Pulse Audio. We've done Blues. Doxion we don't want. FFTW we've done. GTK3 we've done. Lib Sample Rate we've done. SBC. Needs Lib Sound File. So let's save this. So disable tester, this disables SBC's tester. 
remove it if you've installed libsound file which you have so we'll just run config with the disable static and prefix option build no test suite so we'll just install it and that's done so that's chapter 42 SBC is complete and now Pulse Audio looks like we've got everything installed that we need so let's extract it again and what have we got here blues right so we've got all three packages so we can remove that last option and um, we don't want doxygen so let's run this bit Okay, let's look at that summary. Interesting lip sample rate wasn't found. Even though I'm sure we've just installed that. Yeah, we've just installed that, haven't we? Okay, we'll have a look at that in a minute. G Streamer, that's not enabled either, even though know we've installed that. So let's have a look at this meson options and just go to the top and look for lib sample. So options, so by default it's disabled, okay, and it's deprecated. Right, so we won't bother with that one. And the other one was can't remember what the other one was now. Uh, let me see this sample. I can't see it there at all. Uh, oh, G Streamer, that was it. Yeah, so that's okay. Blues. There's a G streamer and a blues five option. Oh, I'm going to chance my luck with this option. Oh, it does say auto, that one. So I'm just going to enable G Streamer then. So minus D G Streamer equals enabled. Let's see what that does. Oh, I've created the build directory again, of course, haven't I? Because it was part of this command, so let's get rid of that. Directory is already configured. So let's tidy up. Right, 
Right, okay, so that needs a, a program called GStream App, which I don't think is part of the build. So that's obviously why that, that one's not mentioned. No, okay. Fair enough, so let's now remove that. That explains why it says GStream is not installed. So back to Pulse Audio, it's been configured, let's build it. Okay, so let's run the test. It says one will fail if not run as use, uh, root user, but it's not a problem. Right, so let's have a look, and it looks like we've got a pass for all of them. So that's good. So now let's install the package. And remove this configuration file. Config file, so it mentions all about config there, how to set it up. So I'm not going to go into that now. Tidy up Pulse Audio. And mark that off as complete now. <coughs> so shut that tab down. Now we're on to LibCamber again. And we can now build this. patch there as well. So I've got a patch and configure disabling the OSS it's now deprecated has been for a while I believe just run the configure, oops, does that click twice? Configure and make. That's built, let's install it, there's no test. And that's done. So that's chapter 42 as well, the Canberra. Notification daemon, okay we've got the dependencies for this now. This is just a config and make. No test suite. And it 
it says we can run test the notification daemon with these two commands and right it is added to ensure assure that this is the daemon that is the daemon this package not running not one of the other daemon so I'm not sure why that's not working it could be that there's uh, let's try LD config actually No, I'm not sure why it's not working. Um, again, I think it's probably due to the fact that this uh, windowing environment is quite limiting. Um, It should pop up a. Yes, that's right. It's the like there's a notification panel in um, when there's a panel at the bottom. That sort of thing should pop up, or a little window should pop up at the side. So that's probably why it's not working. So that's a bit unfortunate, but there was no errors or anything uh, building it. So it should be ready to work when it can. So this is chapter 12. Notification daemon. So that's installed. Lib notify. Okay, this right. Well, we will we'll be building XFC for anyway, so I'm not going to install that now. It does say required run times notification or XFC notified demons. So the rest is installed. I'm going to download this. I'm going to tidy this one up. So it looks like we can just copy and paste these commands. All done. No testing to run, so just install it and that's done. So that's chapter 25. So iBus so GTK3, GTK4 to build an IM module for it. So let's have a look at GTK4. Dependencies, we've done these. Get this list up to make sure these aren't ones that we've opened ready to to build. So Fribidi is done, GDK picks buff graphene, Libepoxy. I think we did that one. Chapter twenty five. Oh yes, that's right, I've got that to reinstall after Mesa has been or reinstalled I imagine that would be. FFmpeg4. Now is that one that we were trying to build, isn't it? Yeah. So that's like a circular dependency. Uh, 
Um, Okay, hasn't got any dependencies. Lame hasn't as such. That needs Yasm. There's Nasm. Yeah, I think I've built this one already, uh, chapter 24. Absorb drivers. Yeah, LibVA I've done. And VA API, so that can be got rid of. That's been built. VD Pal. This for what was this for? Was this for FFmpeg? Was it? I don't think this is appropriate because it says there it's for NVIDIA GeForce 8 and later and one or two others. I don't think it's um, appropriate for a Intel. Get rid of that one. Free or DRM. That would have been built, I think. All oh, right, we've got that to rebuild actually after the optional. It looks like most of those optional, if not all of them, have been built anyway. Um, open CV. It's got a few. V4L. That looks like that might be ready. STR2. That's ready. Right, so I think. Yeah, back to GTK4. So GTK4 needs FFmpeg. FFmpeg, we've got iBus. Let's go back to FFmpeg. Is it this that needs iBus? No. So what needs iBus? Is it STR2? Something here needs iBus. Right, let's start FFmpeg again. Where wasn't this, was it? Right, let's start FFmpeg again. So I recommended as. Right, 
right, so I've lost what was required for IBUS and what needed it. This needs MPEG as well, F of MPEG. So it looks like I'm going to have to install FFmpeg before some of these other packages. Oh, there's iBus there, so it's for SDL2. Let's go back to FFmpeg. So it's got all these recommendations. Um, I think as all the recommended are installed, I'm going to install FFmpeg for some of these optional ones that require it. And then when everything else is done, then I'll be able to install it. I think that's probably the best thing to do. So let's download it now. So there's lots of things being enabled here. And we haven't got a lot of these yet. So I might have to remove them. So I'll do this set first. And then copy this. paste it in and I'm going to remove the ones of these that I know I haven't got, for example these two here uh, libvpx I'm sure is in, we've done oops, Vorbis, Theora, Opus, MP3 Lane we haven't done right, this is not easy to move around with Free type we've got installed. Um, FDK we haven't. Libas we have. AV resample. Not sure about that. I'll leave it in. No, I'll. Oh dear. Uh, remove it actually. And let's see what we've got here. GPR version 3. Enables transcode to be compiled. So I might add that in in case we need that then. Um, I can just add it here, can't I? So enable AV resample. And 
to enable lip pulse. We've got that. So we can put that in. Right, let's see if that configures. Right, lip VPX enabled with no support decoders found, so I'll have to get rid of that. So this is a really cut down version of FFmpeg. Deprecated library. Okay, but it did enable another package, so obviously it's been tested within BLFS. So let's now run make.
Right, so that's finished building. Um, I did notice it was building libraries, um, even though we removed the enable version of those libraries. So I imagine they're internal libraries it's building. So um, this is to build PDF documentation. If we've got text live installed, we haven't got that installed, so certainly not at the moment. So I might do that maybe soon, depending on the requirements for it. Uh, Doxygen to rebuild the HTML documentation. We haven't got that installed. The fake, so I'll ignore that. The fake suite tests include comparisons with installed files and should not be run before the package is installed. Therefore, if you desire to run them, instructions are given further below. So, as the root user, oh, I forgot one command here, didn't I? Compile this fast start for Qt. So let me do that first. That was quick. So sudo su again. Install. And we'll skip the PostScript documentation, Doxygen documentation. Then it says uh, to properly test the installation, you must have rsync installed and follow the, the instructions for the FFmpeg automated test environment. First, about one gigabyte of sample files used to run fate are downloaded with the command. So I'm going to run this to ensure that what we've just compiled is valid. Um, rather not, because we are going to rebuild it, but it is going to be used by other packages. So. Um, just go ahead with it unfortunately. So it says the fate suite directory is created and the files are downloaded there. That command actually runs an rsync command to obtain the sample files. You may want to compress and keep this directory for testing again in another system or when a new version of FFmpeg is launched. Then you unpack the sample files in the source directory and run again the make fate's rsync command above to sync the repository. Now the downloaded size and time are drastically reduced. Estimated values and package information do not include the download SBU. Some samples may be removed in the new version, so in order to be sure, local and server fake samples are identical. When you previously saved samples, run the following command. Okay, so I will do that because I will be reinstalling it, so at least it will save having to wait for the download to complete. So. One gigabyte. I've got a relatively slow board broadband link, so it's going to take um, maybe 10 15 minutes. I'll just wait for that to finish downloading.
Okay, so that's finished downloading. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to um, back up that directory. So let's have a look. So it's called Fate Suite. There, so tar it first of all. Um, call it FF and peg four dot four fate suite dot tar. And I put the right options in so it's compressed verbose and the file name with that and the next thing I should do is to compress that so I'm going to use XZ this will take a while compress verbose extra compression maximum compression I'll do this on three threads, I don't think it will work on four, I think it will run out of memory in eight gigabytes um, one should two gig a thread I'll try four threads, I don't think it will work I'll keep an eye on it Oops. like I said, minus that should be Okay, it's only two minutes, that's uh, not as bad as I thought it would be. Oh, it's slowly creeping up now. I was worried it might be in the order of sort of 10, 20 minutes, but um, it seems to be going all right at the moment.
Right, so that did compress OK in 8 gig. I wasn't sure. Um, I compress and do things on so many different systems, different configurations. Uh, tend to lose track what, what works and what doesn't work. But anyway, the compressions achieved a 70% reduction, or rather 30% reduction, so 70% of its original size, which is good. So the next thing I'm going to do is to move that file back into the um, sources directory just so I don't lose it or forget about it and accidentally delete it. So I'll just put that back there. So we should still have our fate suite directory intact and there it is. And you, I think you saw it was um, approximately one gigabyte, just a one, yeah, one point two gigabytes in total. So this is the command to run next time to refresh that. Um, well, after the the tar file that I've just created is expanded, this this command will refresh it. But to run the tests, um, this is what I need to execute here. So I'm going to run this first bit here. And uh, what's this do here? Tease it to fight, but yeah, and then they're looking for test. Yeah, I think what I might do with this is put this in as I have done already, uh, set number of threads to four, and I'll tail the output because they're teeing it to this screen so tail minus f fate dot log so I'll press enter there and quickly press enter there all right hasn't written to it yet So, oh, maybe it's because it's compiling the test at the moment. Let's just check the syntax of that command. .fate.log I'm not sure where that fate.log is going to uh, find. Understanding that then. I don't use T a lot, in fact, hardly ever, and I'm sure it's a command that. See, the output of pipe is being. Uh, sorry, make is being piped into T, and T writes that log and spews the results out to the screen, so it's probably pointless trying to tail it actually, being the stuff going to the screen. It could be the T is buffering it and that's why the log file hasn't been created yet. So I'll just leave that to run.
Right, so those tests have run. Let's now run this grep command here. And it says there's 3,854. Yeah, so that looks okay. That's larger than 3,700, as it states there. So that's okay for MPEG for now. Uh, sorry, FFmpeg. So chapter 44, I'm going to mark that off as complete, but to rebuild it. Uh, chapter 44. And I want to rebuild it after... Yeah, all the optional, basically. So that is good for now. Because it means, let me just tie this up. It means that I can now carry on building other packages that needed FFmpeg. For example, this one here, GTK4. Um, next one I need to build for this is GST Plugins Bad. And there's GST Plugins Base, LibDVD Read. So this hasn't got any dependencies. Okay, so that is not a BZIP file, so let's open it in a new tab. It's obviously a web page, a smart web page. Download will start in a few seconds, there it goes. And extract. So again, one of these packages where we just need to copy and paste the commands. And install it, no tests. That's done. So that's chapter 42. Lib DVD read. Next, libdvd nav. So it looks like it's going to the same place. So I'll open this up in a another tab. There's the download. Save it and extract. that right it seems like this keyboard's playing up again with DVD nav again same as before copy and paste and install, that's done. So libdvd nav, and the chapter 42 is done. Sound touch, next. It says sign in, so let's open that in a new tab. Checking your browser. We need to sign in 
before continuing. Why has that come up? Um, so there's no information there saying that you'd need to sign up. Try once more, open a new private window. Right, okay, what I'm going to do then is to try and find this file. Uh, in fact, it should be here, yeah in this open source lab at the Oregon State University. So it's called Sound Touch. So let's go to the S. Sound Touch, there it is there. Gonna save link as and I'll just view the MD5 sum. Let me kill that to get that out. Oops, get that out of the way. Oh, that's killed the whole of the browser. That's a bit unfortunate. Okay. that, kill that terminal, so cat sound touch, right, well, don't know where it downloaded that, um, It could be in the temp. So I'm just going to search to find out oops, where that's gone to. Okay, so maybe it's been saved as a temporary file name, so I'm going to download it. Okay, so it's in the MD5 sum format, so I can do MD5 sum minus C soundtouch.md5 sum, and you can see it says that the download is okay. And another thing that's a good proof that it's a good download is to just cross-reference the MD5 sum that's printed in the book. So you can see it begins 628 and ends in 86B. So that looks pretty good. So I'll just get rid of that MD5 sum file. And extract sound touch so bootstrap command below fails if the AC local environment variable is set as, in, as specified in xorg 7 if it is used AC local needs to be unset for this package and then reset for other packages so what I'm going to do is to spawn 
another instance of my login and um, if I echo SE local um, be able to see that um, that's set at the moment so if I do unset dollar AC local now echo it oh sorry unset AC local now if I echo it it's empty so I can now go to sources BLS BLFS sound touch and run these commands That's done. Now I can do sudo make install and oh, there's an extra switch here. I didn't see that. Uh, parallel across. Right, so that might be worth doing. So I'm going to delete the directory, extract it again go into it, type in the bootstrap command copy the configure command, copy this enable openmp option and now type make to take that advantage of the several processor cores and then sudo make install and that's done so I need to do control D to get back out of that session um, this directory didn't exist anymore now because I've deleted it in the other session and if I just echo AC local to ensure it still exists and you can see there's the setting so I shall remove uh, sorry uh, not remove mark off sound touch in chapter 42 and close that down and then we move on to the optional um, packages so curl I think that's been installed completely now so I'm just going to check that chapter 17 yep it has uh, so fac is next check any options, no there isn't so just run this as it is ok the package does not come with a test suite have a basic functionality can be tested by encoding a sample wave file the sample file is installed by the LC utils package so I don't think we've installed that yet so I'll install that now so that we can test this so I'll bring that up there looks like we've got all the options I'm actually going to do what I've just done uh, and to get another session up back into BLFS fetch this utils package
and let's have a look at this disable house of conf. So I omit that one there because we've got XMLTO basic audio test. So we'll omit these two. Okay, so let's copy that one. Oops. In fact, if I copy all of it. And delete these. With curses. Command not found, that's interesting. Oh, I see. Because I didn't put a end of line terminator on the end, so I'll just copy that. And add it on and rerun it. So now I can do make. So do make install. Oops. And some information there about configuration so we can use outer mixers to change the fact that the channels are muted by default now what have we got here okay it could be that we haven't got the sound cards configured correctly um, let me do a LD config No, so it looks like the, oh yes, and as it's got down here, um, we need to be a member of the audio group, so let me just check, yeah, there's something else here to do, so I'm going to become root, first of all, sudo su, cd into blfs boot scripts, install this boot script to enable the volume controls to be remembered. So I'm going to start that now. Okay, so that may be the fact that that file doesn't exist at the moment, so that's not a problem. Um, So I'm going to add my user to the audio group. I'll come back out of here and I'll log out of here again and log back in. Oops. Now if I do groups, it should be in the audio group. I'll try that ALSA mixer. No, it's still not working. Okay, so it could be there's some changes that still need to be done in the kernel. Um, um, LSPC. Audio device. So it looks like there is a kernel driver installed, but there could be something else missing. So, um, Let's have a look. Let me come back out of here. I'll see you till so. I think I can clear that up first of all. Go back 
click here, I'll become root and go into sources BLFS uh, no sorry Linux and have a quick look at the device drivers um, so I want sound devices which is somewhere down here uh, sound card support PCI sound devices, it could be one of these that is missing and I bet it's probably that one MC97 Oh no, it's modem, so it's probably this one. Being this an Intel chipset. So I'll set that to module. Exit HD audio. Oh, yes, I think normally we need one of these audio codecs. So I'm gonna I'll set that to yes to make it auto loading. Um, it's usually the real tech one that works. What's that one do? I think that could probably be disabled, that option. And that option as well. and that option and that option Don't think I need that one. Probably don't need that because we're building the latest software. So I think I'll go with that and rebuild the kernel.
Okay, so that's version 7 of the kernel now. Just check that we've got... I normally have boot on a sec separate partition, so... Oops. So that's why I'm always checking. So, cp arch x86 underscore 64 to boot vm linux dash 2 cp system dot map to boot system dot map dash 2 cp dot config to boot config dash 2 So that's the kernel updated. I'm going to quit the browser now. Control Q. Come out of. So I have to remember I'm in FAC and it was ready to be tested. So that was the stage we're at. Come out of here. Uh, oh, I don't know what's happened there. Strange, never seen that before. So I'm going to come out of that login. Oh, is this something to do with that browser being? Oh, that's strange, it's kicked off links. Right, I'm not quite sure what how is happening there. Um, unless there's a test that's tried to spawn something. There was some packages that did need links, so whether they spawned that in the background and then as soon as I've logged out of StarTex, because it's still in the background and that was the parent login, it could be that it's just attached itself to the screen as I've um, quit. So that's probably what's happened there. Uh, I can't, can't understand why else it would have... Um, suddenly appeared because I've had no reason to run it at all. Anyway, I'm going to do control or delete. So it's rebooting. I've got the chime. Got grub, press enter, and it's booting. So we did get some errors there, but to do with the um, ALSA script again, but that's probably because, like I said, nothing's been uh, saved yet. We haven't run it yet, so let's go back into our. Oops. graphical environment so let's see if we can now run ALSA mixer so we're going to do groups first to make sure I am actually in the audio group yes so ALSA mixer right now it's working uh, again unfortunately the um, graphics aren't quite right. Uh, actually, I might come out and do this from the prompt. It should work and should look correct as well. Yeah, that's a bit better. Um, so, at the moment, it's got HDA Intel HDMI. And can I remember how to operate this F6 select sound card? So I want the PCH version. This will be the analog. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to hear something on the speakers. Um, headphones at the max. The masters three quarters. Let's try playback F3. No, F5. That's showing more. Logic generic. 
system information version so that's okay cards so there's the two cards we've got one's configured to come over the HDMI um, I don't know if I'll be able to mix that in or not I'll try that once I can get the sound definitely working so there's some stuff there timers PCM so it looks like the volumes are set up not sure what that is internal mic mic boost okay auto mute is enabled wonder how I change that space bar Right, so we'll have pressed the down arrow, to, uh, down arrow to disable it. Um, these two, not sure about them. So, in theory, it should be configured to output on the um, analog card. If I go back to the HDMI, now I'm not sure what situation that's in. So, let's see if I can get it to work on the analog SRTX. Speaker test to check your settings have been applied. You should hear pink noise on your speaker. So, this might by default go to the um, HDMI. Unable to open slave. So let's try and set the device. Um, I don't know what it's going to be called, I'm not sure. Actually, the um, answer mixer specified the device. Let's do F6. Oops, F6. So, system information cards then tell us there. Proc A sound cards, right? Okay, so it's card one, by the looks of it. Let's try that. Oh, what was there? Oh, would it be Elsa, maybe? No. Slash dev. Okay. Um, there's some other tools here. Oh, they're not very much help. Uh, let's try. Play. No. Let's see if speaker test minus D will tell us what devices there are. No. Nope. Let's try this again. System information. I'll proc 
ice sound PCM. Let's have a look at that. See if I can find out if there's any device information. A device zero again, but there's no actual dev. some information here somewhere it's just a matter of finding it let's go to the card we want let's look at the system information again so version cards devices timers PCM. So these are just printing out the information that we've already looked at in the PCM, for example. Proc ASAM cards. Let's see if there's anything obvious here. Oh, SMD, see it straight away now. SMD. PCM is several there. So there, stroke SMD slash. I suppose we just have to try each of these in turn. No. Unknown PCM. Next one. No, it's just nothing, none of those. Try control C1. Means it's card one. No. Guess it's gonna be one B, is it? No. Let's try the other one. stumped by this I might have to um, go offline and have a bit of a swat up on the internet uh, it could be even that there's still something missing in the kernel 
Here's a point, let's do this mod. Uh, could be that there's a module missing. Uh, slip. Let's have a look at the modules we've got that haven't loaded. Drivers. Right, I'm going to find out what they're called then. Um, actually, let's do a pseudo LSPCI minus K, see what that looks like. That doesn't look like that's changed at all. So one of these is that's that one B. One of these will be the HDMI, I imagine, and the other one will be the PCM, so on the digital ones, analog. Uh, oh yes, of course I didn't do again. I forgot for some reason, which is strange. Um, I forgot to install the modules, which is why I couldn't see. The sound modules, there they are. So if I do mod probe AC97 bus and SMD AC97 codec. Last one SND Intel. Let's copy that. Let's just check there's no other sound related. No, it doesn't look like it. So, mod probe that one. So, you can see that the AC97 bus is used by SND AC97 codec and SND AC97 codec is used by SND Intel ATEC0 so now we've got the modules installed let's try well let's see if our mixer looks any different select sound card so that looks the same Let's try the speaker test now. So it's still not working. So let's look at Dev SM 
do you see what we've got there that's still the same HW C0 D0 I'll try both of these C3P, no, C1D0, C, no, D0P, D1, no, so that's still not working. Um, what I might do is reboot to see if those uh, modules will install or load automatically. That might be better than me just trying to put them in, it should work, but um, let's see what happens. So I've got the chime. Grab menu and it's booting. So there's no error this time, it's probably because the files have been created. Let's do LS mod. So it looks like those sound modules haven't installed automatically. Let's do also mixer. Still not loaded. Speaker test still not working. So I think what I might do here is boot into the um, live CD and see how that looks there. Um, see what modules might be loaded. Um, to see if that can give us any clues. So I've just plugged in my live CD or live USB stick. So I'm going to control alt delete out of this. And get ready to press the alt button when it boots. So there's the chime, holding down the alt button now. Okay, that hasn't worked. Unfortunately, it's come up with the grub boot. So I'll try again. So once again I'm holding the button down. Okay, I've got the USB EFI boot come up and it's booting so it should appear on the screen soon. USB. Well, 
Now, interestingly, that said fail to power up the sound codec. So I wonder if there's something a bit funny about these Apple sound cards. Well, that was just the bog standard serious logic. I guess it's whether it's um, supported in the kernel or not. I might have to do some research on the internet to find out exactly what hardware drivers I should have. So here we go, I'll get a prompt up, get rid of that, this font's a bit bigger, so I'll become the root the LS mod this will probably be quite big won't it yeah so I'll just look down here to see anything that looks soundy okay so there's one straight away I can see codex cirrus so I'll make a note of that So S N D underscore H D A underscore codec underscore Cirrus. There's also a generic one. Um, then we've got LED trigger audio as well, I'm not sure if that's absolutely necessary but I'll make a note of it LED trig underscore audio so that's used by generic and generic is a uh, Cirrus is used by generic see what else there is uh, HDA codec HDMI so that's probably not the one I want because I want the analog one I'm not sure which is which but I wouldn't have thought the built-in one would have been over HDMI so sound H D A underscore codec underscore HDMI Sound HDA Intel and you can see there's other ones here as well. So sound underscore Intel underscore DSP CFG sound intel underscore sdw acpi and snd hda codec which is used by all those other codecs So that's generic HDA codec HDMI HDA Intel and Cirrus Sound HDA core. So that's the same lot that uses that lot. 
sound and hardware deck. So I, could, I can't believe that all of these are needed. They're probably just loaded. Sound PCM and timer. And SMD, that will be the top level sound module level thought sound core. Let's make a note of that one. That's probably it. Yeah. And if I do LSPCI minus K and take a look at the, oh, there's a load more devices here, I think, than I've got. Thunderbolt Bridge. So I may need to activate some more devices to make full use of the hardware. So Host Bridge, VJ compatible audio device. So kernel driver, HDA Intel, so that's right. And the other audio device is SND HDA Intel as well. So it's interesting that it doesn't actually say that it's Cirrus that's loaded. Um, what might be useful is to actually load up another terminal Uh, mount dev SDA. I uh, can't remember which one it is now. Let's do an F disk. No, let's do an F disk myself. Right, so the root is SDA2. So mount slash dev slash SDA2 onto MNT. So I've mounted the LFS BLFS partition. And what I'm going to do is to put a file with called modules.txt into the root directory. Um, right, I'll do lsmod and pipe it into there. And I'll do lspci minus k into mnt root. Um, I'll just call it lspci txt and I can refer to that and add in to the kernel as I see fit. Um, okay, I forgot to do that. So if I look at the MNT root, which is the home directory of the root when I boot into um, BLFS, oh, what's that setting was there? Okay, that's that's settings that I've added in for compiling. So that should be all the information I need. Let's have a quick look at LS USB. Okay, there's nothing much there that will be of any use. Although maybe it will, so I'll. You can see I've got a few other devices plugged in there, but they're not important. So this will be LS USB. It just saved me having to reboot into here, so I'm going to quit this now and reboot into, oh, I suppose I've got to shut down actually because I've got to pull the USB stick out, so I'll shut that down. I suppose what I should have done also while I was in there is just check the sound it actually did work. So I'll power that up now. 
so there's the chime we should be getting the grub menu up and there it is and so it should be booting now so I'm going to log straight into root change into sources linux going to make menu config and go to device drivers down a couple of pages to sound card support so I'm going to look for some of these things that I've found so let's start with SND underscore HDA underscore Intel first of all see if we can find that so that's under HD audio that's real tech so which one's the Intel one because none of them say Intel let's have a look oh I see it's the whole menu oh and then choose the appropriate codec options below I see so we want to get rid of the real tech and add in the Cirrus logic and that might be all that's needed actually um, I'm going to look for one or two of the other options so one was called um, is it DSP CFG and which is found put the full name in SND underscore Intel underscore DSP CFG no, that's not on this kernel then let's look again for SND underscore Intel underscore imagine be a few of these Oh, is that it there? It's been renamed so DSP config. So that's already loaded. So it might be just one of these things that's loaded automatically. And, and or yeah, it is because there's no option to set it. There's no number next to it. Um, then there was SDW ACPI. SDW. Okay. SDW underscore ACPI. No. no, it doesn't look like that's available either. Let's look for HDA core. So that's set, so that's good. HW DEP. Depth. That's not in there. Oh, it's one one word. HW depth. So that's set. That's okay. And I presume PCM and timer will be there. The other ones we've got. Underscore PCM. Uh, what's the prefix with sound? SND underscore PCM. Yep, yeah, that's set as well. And let's look for SMD underscore timer. That's also set. So it could be it's just this Cira, Cirrus um, option that was missing. SMD core is the last one I've checked. That's not on there. So let's exit this. Build it again. to build
So that's built. I'm going to copy this. So it's just had the chime come up, got the menu and it should be booting now. So I'm going to log in as root first, and that's mod. So those modules haven't loaded again, so I might just build them in. Oh, but again, once again, I've forgotten to do it. I don't know why I keep forgetting to do it. Uh, CD sources. Then look, so I need to do it, make modules install. Okay, so mod probe. AC97 bus. Uh, let's copy these. In fact, these may not be needed, things are not loading, come to think of it. Um, let's come out and go back to my normal user. So I'll just check the cards again. So the masters, some of these volumes have changed, that's interesting. Let's put this up quite a way so I can hear it. Put the mic boost down because that's not needed. Internal mic boost. Um, let's display all of them with F5. Right, let's try the speaker test now. No, it's still not working. Right, let's try putting those modules in. I don't think that'll work. C97 So what I'll do is I'll search within the kernel find one's name anything begin with sound Interesting, I thought it should be. Oh no, the other ones are built in, that's right. So let's load that one and that one. So that's loaded all up correctly. Let's try speaker test again. No, it's still 
I'm sure I need to specify the device. That hasn't changed. Right, what I'll have to do is have a look at this and uh, come back when I've found something useful. Okay, so um, I've been researching on the internet and um, I've found something that causes the error to disappear but the sound still doesn't come out. Um, and I think it could be the way I've set up my recording for the videos that might be affecting that. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time, or too much more time, I've already spent quite a bit of time on this, um, trying to resolve why the sound's not coming out. I'll look at that right at the very end uh, without the recording set up to see if it does indeed work correctly, make sure there's no external interference. Um, but what I can show you is what I found out. There's um, this sort of stuff I've used to deal with years ago when sound cards were quite a pain to set up um, and you know with modern desktop environments they just seem to automatically work so it's something I've not dabbled with for a long time and I had to remind myself about a lot of things um, so I'll just go through what I have found is a combination of what I've remembered and what I've found on the internet um, another thing I did find out about is the modules that are loaded or trying to force to load yeah they're not actually loaded at the moment they're AC97 which is pre Intel HD um, technology as I remember so they're not needed and that's probably why they're not loading because they're not appropriate for this sound card so I'm going to modify the kernel to remove them but I won't rebuild the kernel I'll just let that integrate the next time I have to um, rebuild the kernel so I'll just make the modifications in the config file and leave it like that but basically there's um, two files I'll start with there's a, a local one a sound RC and this information is all on the ALSA website the documentation is quite good there um, I haven't got this one but a sound RC you can store personal information like for your own configuration for example if you want to set up um, some of the channels in a specific way or with specific volumes or disable certain channels and then there's a global one called um, etc asound.conf and this is one I've been editing and I found two ways to get rid of that error the first one is um, this bit here which I've actually commented out and these three which seems to do a similar thing not identical it seems to do a similar thing um, and they both work quite well. Now, I did remember there's an, a command called A play that gets installed as LCU utils, I think it is. And if you do minus L, it shows you all the available hardware devices. Now you can see the top one's the HDMI one, which is a digital um, device. That, and that's on card zero, what they call card zero. Then there's a card one but it's got two separate devices device 0 and device 1 now device 1 is also digital but device 0 which is one I think I need I'm pretty certain it's an analog one that I need that's the card and device that I need so it's card 1 device 0 and that's what these two lines relate to here and this relates to here so this is the card you set up so it's card 1 I want and this is the device Likewise, these two, I'm not sure what the dif distinction is between these two, um, but uh, actually, I'm not sure that should be control. I'm not sure if that should be zero, actually, but it does seem to work by, by getting rid of the um, error. Uh, that could be why they don't, they don't behave exactly the same. 
Um, but yeah, that's basically that's what I've done in these two configs is specify the card, which is card one, and then a device, which is device zero. Um, if I try to set it to either of these, for example, card zero, device three, or card one, device one, then I get errors, either the same error or different types of errors. So I definitely know for sure from that empirical evidence that this is the correct card that I want to access to use the internal speakers. Um, so then if I do speaker test, you can see that um, it's now working and you can see it's, um, well, it's only doing front left. You have to specify speaker test minus C2 to say that I've got two channels. And what it will do, it will alternate between left channel and right channel. So you can see that happening now. But I can't hear anything. Nothing's coming over the headphones. Um, I can't see that anything like that's being recorded. So there's still something else, as I say, not quite right. Whether it's another driver I need in the kernel. Or it is the um, hardware setup I've got to do these recordings. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, I've also tried doing... Um, is it A play? I think it is. Yep, A play, which allows you to play a audio file. So there should be some under share. Um, is it Alsa? Yep, Alsa. Guess it's speaker test. Oh, there's a sample. Oh no, that's not it. Uh, Uh, that's not it. Is it sounds then? It might be sounds. Yep, sounds. So you can see there's some sample sounds there. So if I do noise, I think this is the one that's mentioned in the book. It should be pink noise. If I do that, it says it's playing it. It's played it, but again, I can't hear anything. So it's kind of there, but not quite there. So as I say, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to spend any more time on it. I'm going to carry on with the rebuild. And that will let me find out if the sound works. For example, when I get KDE up and running. If it doesn't work there, then the chances are I'll still not need to make some more configurations in the kernel. Um, and indeed with KDE, you don't need to set up ALSA conf or asound.conf or anything like that. Um, it generally just works. Um, and I imagine the same would be for um, GNOME as well. So um, what I'm going to do is to um, go into the kernel, I think, and just remove those other modules to do with the AC97. So there's three modules, so that should be easy to spot because I think I made everything else built in. So I've got the device drivers, a couple of pages down, sound support. Um, and I think it was under this PCI, was it? Yeah, it's that one there. Need to get rid of that. Uh, that might actually get rid of all the modules. It may generate other modules. Generic sound devices was set before, but I don't think there's much to add in there, no. So PCI sound devices need to be selected to get into HD audio. So, but the menu just needs to be empty. And then HD audio, I've got the HWDEP interface, which was one of the... Um, modules required, or well, not required, sorry, that we saw yesterday with the um, live USB. I'm not sure it's actually required, to be quite honest. Um, just check. That was HDAHW DAP. Yeah, I don't think any of these were being used. Uh, there's the Cirrus codec. 
So as I say, there was a generic one as well, but I'm not sure that would be... Oh, it's there, is it? It's already... Yes, it's already selected anyway. So if I save that, I'll, I will actually rebuild it because then I can see when I build the modules that those modules aren't being installed. So I don't think this should take too long because there's only a, one option I've modified. Yeah, that's pretty quick. So I'll um, copy arch x86 underscore 64 to boot VM Linux dash 2 and system. map to boot system dot map dash two and dot config to boot config dash two then make modules install I realise why I forget forgot to do the make modules install is because I don't normally rebuild the kernel of Linux from scratch and it's a manual process it's normally a gen two is my normal Operating system, and there it's a case of making, um, yeah, make install uh, to install the kernel. Okay, so you can see those sound drivers uh, modules have been or haven't been installed. So I know that I've deleted them; they, they, they weren't necessary. So I will do a reboot just to take on those changes, make sure nothing else has changed with those fixes that I've done. And like I say, I'll just carry on. Uh, get one of the um, larger desktop environments installed and then test it there. So it's booted. I've just heard the chime. Grub menu and it should appear any moment now. Okay, so if I log in and do the speaker test with two channels, you'll see there's no errors again. So it does tell me that I've got kind of got the right configuration, but it's a chance that there's some other uh, configuration in the kernel that's required. Okay, um, so the house program will run from standard U dev rule. The first time it's running, complaint there's no state. Right, so we didn't run this, so let's run this. I hope this has nothing to do with it. <laughs> the volume settings should be restored. Well, I know they have been restored because I've changed them. And I've seen them um, enabled when rebooted. And in fact, if I do our some mixer now, yep, there. As oh, I'm actually got PCM. setting there and I don't think that was there before. I wonder I can't remember that being there before. I wonder if that's the configuration or this ounce store. I'm gonna to have to try the speaker test again now. No, I can't hear anything so maybe that's just the configuration that's made that channel appear. Um 
so yeah I've done the group already so you can see it's already set to audio and I think we did this Elsa yep it's there ok there's no status if I do start it should ok so it's quite a simple script that is it doesn't, it's, in fact it's not running anything is it, it's just doing something and then stopping so um, yeah that's the ALSA utilities so I'm going to cross that off, I don't think there's anything wrong with that installation at all and close that down and just carry on with the build So I've tied it up. Okay, so the reason why we went to install our utils was of course to try and use the fad. Um sorry, to try and place play this um oh encoding, sorry. Yeah. Uh to use FAAC um to yeah, convert it, and the reason why we need the utils package is not for the sound itself, but for the sample uh, sound file. That as you can see, this is one of the ones similar to what I've just been testing with. <clears throat> so, um, if I go back to FAAC and run this, you can see it's actually done something there. Um, I look at front left there it is it's created an mp4 file it says then decode the result using the FAD program from FAD2 to dash two dot uh, underscore mono etc package and playback the decoded file and requires a play from the LC utils package well it's obviously not going to play but um, we can install FAD as well and test that out so let's pop off to that one. Save the package. There's a sample file here as well. And I'll push this directory and go back. Extract fad and compile it. So there's no other options. So just build it like this. Okay, so that's built. Um, so we're going to test FAD first of all. It was in the FAD directory. So that should do a conversion. And information about the sample file. Yep, it's all good. Now play the result. Well, again, this won't work. It, it will go through the process, but it won't hear, it won't be able to hear anything. And it seems to be doing something. And it says here that A play should identify the file as sine 16 bit little endian, rate 16,000 hertz, stereo. 
and should hear some piano notes. So apart from the audio, the conversions worked. So make install and tidy up fad and mark it off the list. And then I'll pop the directory back in fact close this one down and then we can do these two commands so this one here oops again it's another test really of what we've already tested so you can see similar sort of thing um, except we're converting from mp4 this time and then we should be able to play that it's come up to the same status but obviously no sound again and that's it, so we should be able to install. And that's done. So that's fat after a little, well, quite a big diversion, mainly in Elsa. That's fat installed. And it says there's some other AAC encoders here, um, if you're interested. So I'll shut down that tab and tidy up. And we'll move on. So the next one we've got is sure we've done this little CMS. Don't think it needs to be, I just want to check to see if anything needs to be rebuilt. And I wouldn't have thought so judging by those dependencies. But I shall just check it. No, that's okay. The best we've done lib exif for one test. So this is a gener generic sort of file for imaging, so it would be useful in other places. So let's download the file and a patch. So again, it's another package where we just use the commands that are in the book. And run make check to test it. All looks good. So we'll install it and tidy up. So that's chapter 10 um, lib exif lib exif, there it is. Uh, don't get it muddled up with exif with a v, exif2 uh, different package. So libgudev, I'm sure we've done that Let's go to libmpeg2 next. So I'm going to check this one. libgudev, yep, that's okay. So now we've got libmpeg2. STL, I think that was a, was that a rebuild, that one. Let's see where that is. That's in chapter 42. Right, yes, this was a rebuild SDL. So let's take a look at these. So XORG libraries have got. I'm going to open each one of these. Uh, let's actually see what we've got in our list. Oh, there it is there. Lots of plugins. Right, we're going around in circles here because of FFmpeg, are we? Lots of plugins. Uh, yeah, 
Yes, I think this is part of... Yeah, we've come full circle now. So, as I recall, STL couldn't have been built until ALS has been built, but ALS has led us down this little path, I think, or some way down this path. Or is it plugins? Um, oh, sorry, FFmpeg. Let's go back to STL. Also, plugins needed FFmpeg. We've got FFmpeg, I think, installed to some state, haven't we? Yes. Um, and it's GST plugins base that needs SDL. In the same way that GST plugins bad needs it, but looks of it. So I think what I shall do is I'll close down this SDL and this ALSA plugins. I'll go back to SDL here, load up ALSA here, and continue installing ALSA, or at least the parts we haven't installed. So ALSA plugins is the next one that hasn't been installed. Um, and then the one after that is utils. Um, Alsalib. Alright, oh, now Alsalib we've done. So the next one's the plugins which we need to do. Um, and this is the one that needs FFmpeg, but we've got that. And then Alsa utils we've done, so we'll skip that one. Then there's a couple more, about three more to do. And then that'll be Alsa completely installed. So I'm just going to double check these other, I'm pretty sure these are all in. I just want to be sure there's no more to rebuild. So lib sample rate. Yes, I remember doing this earlier. So it's chapter 42. Lib sample rate, yep, that's okay. Pulse audio is done and speaks is done as well that's that's good so yeah I'll carry on with our sub plugins then so save this file simple package to install okay that's done now some plugins so it's chapter 42 cross that off move on to the next Alsa package which is our utilities as you've seen this has already been installed so we'll skip on to ALSA tools next so this needs ALSA lib which we've got GTK2 we've got GTK3 and something called FLTK so let's go to that one next recommended looks like we've got all of the dependencies here So let's download this. Actually, I better check these aren't already in here. So, high color theme, Jupyter Turbo. Yeah, I really should open these and make sure that they are crossed off my list rather than take a chance and they're not actually installed. So ALSA lib, that's done. Just sort of file utils. Who me 
is uh, text live not installing. So this is chapter 28. High colour themes is done. Chapter 10. Lib JPEG Turbo. Yep. Lib PNG. Yep. Desktop file utils, which is chapter 11. Yep, that's done. Glue, which is 25. Yep, that's done. And these are, I think this needs a reinstall. Uh, chapter 24, yeah, it does. Let's have a look to see what the reinstall is about. So I would say it looks like we've got most of this required for GNOME. Recommended M sensors. So really I think we've got Mako installed as well actually. Yeah, that's installed, so is that not been visited in this browser? Markup safe. There's Mako. Yeah, there's Markup safe. I'm pretty sure this is done. Mako render. Yeah, that, that binder is there, so that's been completed. So really, of all the dependencies, there's only this LM sensors, and we could reinstall Mesa and mark that as complete. So I'm going to save this package, and this is quite a useful tool to have anyway because. Um, it allows you to interrogate sensors on the motherboard, you know, temperature and so on. Um, and I believe even some high level programs can make use of it as well. Okay, so yeah, we've got some config here, so let's do grep. So PCI must be set because the Max is PCI based system. But let's just check. Uh, let's actually check for something. PCI equals yes. So yeah, there it is there, the third one down. Right, I see. So what it's saying is to enable all the sensors as modules. Now, I have a feeling that you don't actually need to do this, that the package, I don't know. Yeah, maybe better do this. I have a feeling it's not absolutely necessary, but let's do this anyway, do it properly. Um, so I'm going to become the root, go into the Linux source Oops. make menu config so that means we've got to install the kernel again so we know we've got PCI, we know we've got module support so device drivers I2C which is there I2C device interface. I think that's a module. And then I2C hardware bus support. And it says to configure all of them as modules. Well, some of these, obviously, to me, or it's very obvious to me that they're not appropriate. So, for example, these ALIs, this AMD. But to be sure, let's make them all 
modules and find out. I would suspect that the one we need is probably that one, 82801. Fact, I might even take a punt at this. Um, let's do an LS pseudo LS PCI minus K. Um, you can see already we've got this 801 SM bus installed and working. Uh, Come out of here and see what was set originally. Yeah, eight two eight two eight oh one is already built in. So I think that's all that's needed. For this Mac, there it is. There, in fact, I think that's it. There, 801 SM bus. So, if I go back here, help to see I801. Um, so let me s save that and do the message. Grab 801, we'll see what was. Right, that's that SM bus. Okay, let's look for I2C. It may not be there because part of it was uh, not configured. Uh, device drivers. to see okay to remove any doubt let's make them all modules it's going to take a bit longer but we'll know for sure what uh, needs to be installed for this Mac and obviously if you're doing a different machine it will be different anyway or it potentially could be different so if set all those up um, let's move this down here then we need to go to hardware monitoring support which is up one hardware monitoring support it's somewhere near the bottom here there it is there and we need to set in fact I'll set this as a module need to set all of these What's this chip in button? Okay, yeah, that might be handy. Set some more output on while we're trying to find out what we've got. Now this probably really is overkill but it's probably the safest way to do it without doing research or um, any investigation. I have actually configured LM sensors without doing all of this. It seems to be able to access the hardware from what I've seen and pick out the correct options to turn on um, which is why I'm doubtful this is absolutely necessary but it's certainly the best guarantee of getting the right hardware. So I'll save that and start the build. So I imagine this is going to take a little while. We've made some significant changes. So when it's done, come back and carry on.
Okay, so that's built. So now I need to once more copy the kernel file into boot dash 2 copy system.map into boot system.map dash 2 and config boot config dash 2 and as it reminds there let's do make modules install So that should be it. Um, what I need to do now is to reboot and then we can carry on with the uh, manual itself.